you've already done so, please take a look at your tickets. Separate the tickets and at the bottom of each ticket there's a small perforated stub of the barcode. Please tear that little barcoded end off the ticket and have it ready for the trainment. Thank you. Boost Motor Lodge, a privately operated motel. Good night. Boost. Oh, yeah. Farther up the road, you'll see the flagpole and the yellow tower of the National Toy Train Collectors Museum. This museum houses toy trains of all sizes, shapes, ages, and colors dating from the mid 1800s through today. As some of these trains are featured on five operating layouts. Fairview Crossing, Fairview. this is it. Somewhere under 60 miles an hour. Way under 60 miles an hour. Espen Shade 
crossing is next. That's the shade. Now this area of Lancaster was settled in the very early 1700s. Route 741, the road you came to visit us on today, was originally a Conestoga wagon trail opened about 1710. It led from Philadelphia to the Indian outpost at Carlisle, just west of Harrisburg. Now today we're going to travel through an area of about 20 of these old style working Amish and Mennonite farms. And in an effort to preserve the farmland that you've come to see, the Strasburg Railroad has teamed up with the Lancaster Farmland Trust. So when one of these farms becomes available for preservation, the railroad will donate a portion of the ticket price toward preserving that farm. So we can hope to keep this area rural and agricultural. The ride certainly wouldn't be any chance if we were traveling to housing development. Now on the running right hand side of the train there's a big old house over there with red shutters. Well the stone portion was built in 1774 and was originally the home of Cornelius Faree, a wheelwright and a Conestoga wagon maker. Settlers heading west could buy Conestoga wagons, guns and provisions all produced in this immediate area. Now today this old house is part of the Cherry Crest Adventure Farm and the Cherry Crest Adventure Farm is home of the amazing maize corn maze. Now during the summer from July through November, the Cherry Crest Adventure Farm has the five acre corn maze with two and a half miles of trails to get lost in and they have all kinds of farm fun activities and lots of good food. So you might keep that in mind for a nice summer day when the farm is open. You could ride the train down to our picnic grove and then walk up to the corner, enter the farm and enjoy the day at the farm and then come back to the picnic grove for the ride back to the station. Right on the left over there, you can see the theme for this year's uh, Cherry Crest Farm, where it says, batter up. Cherry Hill will be next. Cherry Hill. Now, our little Cherry Hill station will be coming up on the running left-hand side of the train. I know we're going by pretty fast, but you might notice where it says population 17 more or less. That's more when we arrive, and a whole lot less when we leave. Our Grouse Picnic Grove is next on the left-hand side. Now, we don't stop for passengers in this direction. However, during the summer, we run two steam passenger trains here at Strasburg, and we would stop here to meet the incoming train returning to the station. One of the few places in the country where two steam passenger trains still pass each other on a regular schedule. The black tank cars there on the right hand side are scheduled to come into our yard to be unloaded. Now when we get past the cars on the right hand side of the train there's a big farm over there with three big silos. Now this is a typical Lancaster County Amish farm. Neat and clean but very plain. There are no carpets, no curtains, no electric lights, no radio, no television, no telephone, and no automobile because this farmer drives a buggy. But there are plenty of strong workhorses, mules, and willing hands to help with the hard work of farming. Now, in addition to dairy cattle, the produce consists of corn, wheat, rye, hay, barley, soybeans, alfalfa, and famous Lancaster County broadleaf tobacco. These are a peaceful and prosperous people contributing greatly to the farm economy of Lancaster County. We're very proud to have them as our neighbors. Now it was around 1900 that there was a little narrow gauge railroad, the Lancaster, Oxford and Southern that ran through the valley off to the right side of the train, over about where you see the tree line. 
was known to the local folks as the Little Old and Slow. And with a name like that, well, it's no surprise that this poor little railroad went bankrupt, was abandoned, and the scrappers took the rails up so quickly that they stranded an engine, LONS number six, out there on the tracks with no way to get back to her station. Over years, this little engine rusted away and became nothing more than the ghost of an old train. Now we're going to stop down here at Carpenter's Crossing and our locomotive 475 will blow its whistle. And if we're lucky and the old ghost is awake out there, well she generally will answer us back with her whistle. So when we come to a stop, everybody be very quiet, lift the windows a little on the right side of the train, and listen carefully for the ghost of old yellow and S number six. The little tan building down there on the right is a one-room Amish schoolhouse, grades one through eight. Recently built, it's about three years old this year. Okay, now let's everybody be very quiet. Listen carefully for the ghost of old L and S number six. <laughs> for us today. But I'm a little disappointed. Some folks think that's an echo. Well, folks, it's not an echo. We pay that ghost $27.50 a day to sit out there and blow that whistle back at us. Makes her the highest paid employee on our railroad. Now, nobody's ever claimed to see the old ghost, but in the 50 years we've been doing this, she's never once missed cashing a paycheck either. Now while we're on the subject of ghosts, if you shift your view to the running left-hand side of the train, as we cross the road here at Carpenter's Crossing, on the hill behind that low stone wall is the oldest known cemetery in Lancaster County. In it is buried Marie Ferry. Now she was a French Huguenot who fled France in the early 1700s to escape religious persecution. She and her followers eventually made their way here to Pennsylvania and were finally given a grant by William Penn for two square miles right here in 1712. It was they who named their colony Paradise. Now 275 years ago, Marie Curie, her followers in the Pequay Indians were the sole inhabitants of this area. This was America's frontier. Now very shortly, we're gonna cross Strasburg's one and only bridge. Now those of you who have ridden with us before knew that we had to lift our feet and not rock the cars because the bridge was so rickety. Well, this past November, they replaced the bridge, supposedly to accommodate the freight business we're doing here. But uh, the real story is that the farmer using the Pumpkinville Turnpike that goes under our tracks, the, the bridge was not wide enough for his teams, and they kept bumping their heads on the bridges. So with the new bridge, it's higher and wider, and they don't have to wear safety hats anymore. Okay, look to the right and the left. There's the Pumpkinville Turnpike. Byler's Crossing will be next. Byler's Crossing. miles we've been traveling through the heart of what is commonly known as the Pennsylvania Dutch country, the fertile farmland of the Plain People, home of the Mennonites, the Dunkards, also known as the Brethren and the Amish. Within Lancaster there's more than 74,000 of these folks. They live a quiet, peaceful life, hard work and deep religious devotion, exactly as their forefathers did when they arrived here from Germany and Switzerland over 275 years ago. Nothing much has changed, really. Their style of dress, their mode of travel, their entire way of life is still pretty much the same today as it was almost three centuries ago. Now, Lemon Place Junction is next. This is where the main line of the Strasburg meets the main line of Amtrak. 
Now a short distance ahead, our track will begin to curve sharply to the left as we come alongside the tracks that were once the Pennsylvania Railroad's main line between New York and Chicago. Now this location, Lemon Place Junction at Paradise, has got a lot of history to be told. It's the original route of the Philadelphia and Columbia Railroad, which became part of the mighty Pennsylvania Railroad in 1857. Now there were more than 30 trains per day scheduled through here in 1891. Four mainline tracks remained until 1961. Now there are only two tracks, but these two tracks between Harrisburg and Lancaster and Philadelphia still provide a vital transportation link for commuters and long distance travelers alike. Now today, more than a dozen trains still pass through here daily, but they don't even slow down. Now in early days of railroading, trains were smaller and they were pulled by horses. On the running right side of the trains, the buildings you see over there used to belong to Henry Lemon's Hotel where he would provide fresh horses for the train and refreshments for the passengers. Also worthy of note, on February 22, 1861, a special train carrying President-elect Abraham Lincoln and his wife Mary stopped here, and he briefly addressed a crowd of several thousand people as he journeyed to his inauguration in Washington, D.C. And a little more than four eventful years later, another special train passed in the opposite direction. Now this train, sad to say, was a funeral train, and was bearing the assassinated president's body back on his sad journey to Illinois. Now folks, I give you paradise. Change here for Coatesville, Payo, and Philadelphia, Trenton, Newark, and New York City. Well now that's if you can run fast enough to catch an 80 mile an hour Amtrak train. Now you might find it a little difficult to believe, folks, but this is paradise. Well, paradise in Pennsylvania, anyway. Now you're in it, and let's face it, this just might be as close as some of us will ever get to paradise. Now very shortly, we're going to come to a stop down here in the big city of paradise, and our locomotive is going to uncouple from the end of the train and it will pass around us on the interchange track on the right right hand side of the train hopefully to connect up and pull us back to the station now our engineer today is russ and our fireman <coughs> is dave and these fellows work real hard in that engine cab to make our trip possible for us so when they come by it would be a real good idea to give them a big wave and a loud cheer it's been known to make them happy when they're happy well, they generally do connect to the other end of the train, and we don't have to push it back to the station. Now, if everything goes as planned, we will be heading back on the same track, but in the opposite direction. The seat backs in the coach cars are reversible, so you could step out into the aisle and flip the seat back so you could be facing forward for the trip back to the station. Now the interchange track that the train the engine will be passing us on is the track that's used to deliver the freight cars off of the main line that come back into our yard there at Strasbourg. Alright folks, get ready. Here comes our locomotive, our engineer and fireman. It's waving and shouting time.
Now, if you folks are watching the locomotive at the head end of the train up there and see that big cloud of steam, well, not to worry. They're doing what's called a boiler blowdown, where they blow water off of the boiler to clear the sediment and scale that collects. This helps keep old 475 running clean and efficiently. <laughs> 